Hello, and welcome. It's just uh, going to start here in a minute. Just going to wait for a couple of people to get in here. Um, if no one comes in in a couple of minutes, I'll just start drawing. And you guys, this will be up on my YouTube page later, and uh, you can rewatch it on the Incredicon page. Um, so just give it a minute. I might just do, maybe I'll do a little fun sketching while you guys are here. I got one person in. Thank you for joining. Um, so for those who don't know, my name is Michael Gracia. I am a cartoonist. I'm an educator. Um, I've been an animator. I've done lots of stuff. Today, what I'm going to show you guys is about drawing uh, classic cartoon characters. Hello, Carl. Um, thanks for joining me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about drawing classic cartoon characters. I have some stuff lined up on my computer already that'll make life um, a little easier to help out and, and learn some techniques. Um, but before we start drawing, what I always like to do and what I think we should do is start with my intro. Thanks for joining. Um, so, like I said before the intro played, is I'm here. I'm going to show you how to draw some classic cartoon characters. Uh, my background in cartooning has been going on, you know, forever. I've been drawing since I can hold a pencil. So, about two years old, became serious about it when I was about eight years old. Um, one of my first cartooning books, not my first, but one of them, was this book here, Cartoon Animation by Preston Blair. All right, one of my all-time favorite books to this day. Now, there are books out there on animation that some people will say is better. I may agree. I may disagree. I don't know. It depends on the book. But if you really want to learn classic cartoon illustration um, in the sense of for animation like Bugs Bunny and those type of characters, that book I just uh, showed, Cartoon uh, Animation by Preston Blair, is still a great book. It talks about construction. It's, it's still fantastic, but there are other books out there that, that will help you learn with, with the computer technology as well. Um, not just how to use the computer, but how to draw and use the computer as a tool to be your, your uh, you know, uh, be able to draw with it as, 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 your, main, as your main tool. Um, it's a matter of preference. I'm going to be drawing digitally today. Let me switch over to my... Uh, to my Cintiq here. So I'm here on my screen, and if you guys have any questions at any time, please feel free to ask. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'll answer any questions I can. Um, but going back to that book, Cartoon Animation, right? Preston Blair, and I'm going to put this up on the screen, basically broke down the process of drawing into, you. well, he wasn't the first one to do it, but he was like, you know, we use simple shapes. Like, look at that lion right there. Actually, that lion has a longer neck, right? So we got to give it neck. Got to give it that bean body shape, right? And then it's got these legs coming down, feet coming out. It's got over here, these arms. Right? So understanding how these shapes and putting shapes together is all cartooning really is. So, like I said, this is one of the reasons I love his book. Um, you know, styles have changed, and there are books, like I said, that show different styles, more modern styles, which is fine to learn, but I love all the, all the classics. Now, down here on what we're, we're looking at, where I drew this lion here, um, it's very, very basic shapes they're showing. This line that's in red on there on these characters above is called the line of action. That helps us think about the pose our characters in. So you notice after I drew the circle 
on the for the head of line, I drew a line of action to help me with the pose. And it's the same line of action, like his is right there. You see that? Um, mine is a little further back, but it's it's the same same thing here. You know, if I was to draw someone else, and I give them I give them the same line of action, but now instead of having him facing this direction, right? We're gonna go this way. So now the body twists out like so, and it can totally change the positioning that your character is in, right? And he's going, and if this leg, so this arm should be forward, right? And here's somebody running or maybe even jumping or leaping, right? So... That's something I want you to be aware of because I'm going to be using this throughout the drawings that I'm going to do. All right. So what I want to do right now is, hold on, let me turn that off. I'm going to turn this layer off of Preston Blair stuff. Now, one of the first characters that I love to, and I always have fun drawing, is Woody Woodpecker. Now, I found all these images online. I just did some Google searches. Um, and when you're learning, it's okay to trace a little bit. It's okay to, uh, to get these ideas down and, and learn where these shapes go. So I'm going to lower the opacity. Whoops, wrong layer. I'm going to lower the opacity on Woody here. So we can look at it very lightly. And I can come in. And I'll just choose a different color. Let's go up to red so we can see it better. All right. And think about the shapes. Now, these are the different styles of Woody. And this first one here, the, the screwball version of Woody, he's my favorite Woody. But we're going to focus on this one, the 1972, mostly because his pose is, is easy to, to learn and understand here. All right. So um, let's just look at the shapes. So we got this head shape, right? It's a circle. Got this little rectangle for his neck. And his body is that bean right you see that it's a little small bean shape or pear and then these lines are just curved like curved rectangles and the feet are ovals and he's got an oval right there and he's got this curved rectangle here and we'll just do an oval and then another one for his hands See how I'm doing that? And I'm just building him up. His beak off, his eyes are ovals, and then his hair. Just for now, think of it as this big curved line that you'll go in and, and fix and edit. All right. So right there, and don't forget his tail. It's just a couple of curved lines. Um, so right there is Woody, right? So if I was to come in and think about that same thing, what line position? Now, maybe I'll change his pose. So I put him in. I'll still keep him facing that direction. But maybe I will, because his line is just something simple right here. So instead of it being simple, maybe I'll, I'll have his, his body kind of curve around, right? Now that I have his body curving around, I'm going to add in that bean shape that I, I saw for his body. So if, his, if he's still facing this way, his eyes are going to be going this way. Um, you may not be seeing his neck. If we want to see his neck, i got to lower that body shape. So why don't we do that? Why don't I, I lower his body shape? And I'll redraw the whole thing over and make it easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a head. His body was like this, right? So he has this small neck here. And then he's got this bean shape coming in. Okay? Which means, following this curve of the path, we can have his legs, which, at least, like I said, were curved cylinders. And his feet are ovals. And maybe I'll bring his leg up like so.
Okay, and if that's the case, maybe his hands are going out. Maybe he's stretching. It's a, in, in animation. Um, you know, he's coming around here, and maybe he he got hit, or there's food or something that, you know, he's something going on with him. So I'm just creating some kind of expression here. And I'll make his eyes kind of large because we, whoops. We want him to come. They touched the beat there. And if he was getting hit, right? Actually, I don't like that line. Let's bring it out, like, over here. Or actually, you know what? This doesn't. Let's not make him getting hit. Let's make him playing baseball. This, this is great. Like he's he's catching, you know. And we'll have his tail. Maybe I'll have his tail follow the same pattern of of there. And then his his hair might be coming up like so. Okay, so. Do you see how understanding the shapes helps me draw Woody here? So if I wanted to, and this may not be my best Woody that I'm about to draw, but I'm going to lower the opacity on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out a darker color, like maybe we'll use black, and I'll start turning him into Woody. Um, and don't forget, if you have questions, I'm here to answer them. And a little trick to draw digitally, you want nice clean lines, don't draw far away. Zoom in on your on your image. And sometimes it's good to go back for reference. I want to see how his eyes look. So I'm going to do a little bit of erasing of this one here just so I can see how his eyebrows go. Okay. So maybe his eyes, eyes are down a little bit because, you know, he's in the, he's not angry, but he's playing the game. that okay. now I'm not going to finish his mouth right now I'll go back to that Can't forget he's got that little I don't even know what this is called around his around his neck. Okay. He's got his gloves on here. And this one's gonna be just his regular hand. I'm gonna make him right handed. I don't know if Woody is right or left handed. But I'm going to put a, a catcher's mitt or something in, in this. Whoops, too much. Oops. And it's okay, if I was to actually draw this and make this a real picture, I would go in and with it on another layer and really tighten up my pencils or just start inking, right? So I see we got some viewers. Thank you for joining. Don't forget, ask any questions you'd like. And I'm going to make this a big like, mitt here. 
you know, I don't even know what a catcher's mitt looks like. I'm not a sports guy, so I'm going to assume it's kind of got a thumb, right, and, and then it's a deep pocket in here. And maybe some lines to look like a, I don't know, that's the best mitt I could do. I'm looking at it. I don't like his eye, his, his, this eye right there, right? So what I would do is I'd come in. And I would fix it. Put a little eraser here. There. And this, his beak might come down. I don't think we'll see anything past his hand there. It's a little smaller. So, but you guys can see that woody. Turn off the red so you can see it better. All right. So that is is how to draw Woody. You know, we think about the shapes that build them up. If you need to, go in and, um, like I did on, on here, trace over the shapes of the character that you, you know, the version. Like this one here that I did, his head... Right was was a um, let me bring the color up again. So you can so oh, no, that's not the one I wanted to bring the color up on. Sorry, this is the one. So you see his head was that circle I made. Hey Dell, thanks for joining. So um, I'll go back to the red so we can see it. But when we look at this guy here, his head is more of an oval, right? When he first started, he was an oval, and he had this big, oversized beak, and his hair was more, a little piece was kind of triangular in shape. So look for these, these shapes in the characters. Like here, you can see another rectangle, and his body is still kind of that bean shape there, right? These are just thicker rectangles and ovals. Thicker rectangles, ovals, and his arms are kind of the same thing. They just get, you know, for here or there. Okay. So does that, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, we're going to move on. I'm going to lose Woody for a moment. And we'll move on to, let's, I got a few. We'll move on to another character that was part of, of Woody Woodpecker's show. Which was always one of my favorites, Chilly Willy. Now again, I took these images from from the internet. So if you just do a Google search, I'm sure you guys can find these pictures. But let's look how simple Chilly is. This is what we call a model sheet, by the way. It's the character in different poses um, that we can understand how they look in in, in key poses that they may be in. Nikki Ham. Thanks, Nikki, um, and thanks for watching my other YouTube video about making the the. Cra I have a craft uh, paper puppets up on my YouTube channel. Um, very simple paper puppets. You just need a sheet of paper and crayons, really, and you could do it. Um, kids love it. So thank you for checking that out. I said you also said uh, I don't cartoon much, but I need to learn to simplify like you do in cartoons. Make my illustrating planning stronger, faster, and stronger. Well. Uh, it's actually good you said that because cartooning, I've always said this, is is something the more you do, the faster you're going to get. I mean, it's kind of the same in anything, but in cartooning specifically, there is a lot of speed. And, and when you animate and you are first trying to capture the character, we... Um, you know, we, we kind of draw fast because we're trying to capture the gesture, the motion going on. So, like, with with this Chilly Willy, and, and that's why characters were created in very simplistic shapes. So we can go over them a bunch of times. So if I go to this Chilly Willy right here, 
right? What's his head? It's a circle, right? His body is this giant curved rectangle. That's it. He's got a couple of circles on each side with a beak, very small beak. His eyes are circle. Let's look at his hat. It's a rectangle, a triangle, and then a circle. Excuse me. His feet are basically rectangles, right? So if I want, and then his hands, kind of just think of them right now as kind of like sideways U's or something. Um, so like when I draw, if I was to draw Chili Willy, I can now think, oh, line of action, maybe he's bending over, right? And his body's this giant, like curvy rectangle. So I'm going to curve out a big rectangle, right? I might make it a little fatter. And I may see one foot over here and another one kind of out over here. And maybe I'll have this arm back like this, and maybe it's back like this. And this will change the direction of his hat a little bit. But And his... And maybe he's looking in a, in a hole in the ice, right? And maybe there's a fish in there. So because I understand these shapes, because I understand how to put shapes together and how to break something down into its simplest form. I could draw basically any character here. All right. Um, I'm not going to finish a cleanup one, but if I just to do one more, then I saw there was another comment I'll, I'll look at. Um, so what I just did here is I added guidelines into the head. This is what we call the line of symmetry, the one that comes down. It divides the head in half. The one going here across the horizontal line is the eye line. So drawing Chili Willy, I know that his eyes are going to stop right there. And in here would be his beak. And then here's his other cheek puffed out. And then he's got that old school face mask that, you know, like Mickey had and, and everybody. And... And then we got, you know, he's got a little bit maybe more of a, a bigger head. We'll add the hat. So you see, keeping it, uh, keeping it simple and understanding the shapes, you can really draw anything. Let me get to the thing. So Nikki said, I like anatomy, but I feel it was wrong place to start, but it makes university classes feel more important intellectual. I feel starting with shape language would have been better than starting with anatomy. Um, and then you also say, oh, super cute. Nice, you're working with his body like a flexible noodle. Um, well, first I'm gonna, I'm gonna say about the anatomy part. Um, actually, anatomy classes were some of my favorite. I love, I love drawing people. I love drawing whatever, you know, I'm, I'm, my strength is in characters and it's because I understand the anatomy. But I do agree that Sometimes when you start in school, you're not ready for anatomy right away. Um, there should be more. Like I remember when I was in college, I started anatomy in my in a basic art class that I took. It was like a required class I took, and they're like, "Okay, now you're doing anatomy." Um, it wasn't a problem for me because I was, you know, I've been drawing and cartooning my whole life. But for other kids, it was, and um, you know, people just didn't feel they had the foundations and. And I think um, I think drawing with shape language is is even better. You know, is it, it's 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 um, well, just drawing in shapes in general is better. I'll I'll explain. I had on one of my streams. I don't know if anyone saw it on YouTube. I believe it was, or it might have been on my Facebook. Um, but when you break an arm down, right? We're using these three D shapes a sphere, a cylinder, maybe another one, a smaller one for the elbow coming down, this tapered cylinder or kind of like a cone that gets cut off, another one, and then we got our hand right here, right? And when we go in comics, right, all we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go over and start placing where that, those muscles are, right? Right? 
and then the shoulder would come in into the pecs there, and I'm not going to draw the hand. But we're building this up. But if we understand that our body is built in sections, and this is where the shapes come in, I can change up my shapes and say, okay, well, how does the body move? And I know this kind of is like, oh, this is old school, like comic book 101 drawing or, or you know, you got to learn the shapes and, you know, people don't use them all the time. Well, the truth is if you get the perfect what we call underdrawing, which is what I just did with with Woody here. Uh, where's that layer of Woody? Not Woody, uh, Chili Willy. Where's my Chili Willy? There it is. Where I this right here, this red, this is all the underdrawing. This is my 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 skeleton if you will and if you understand how the skeleton works whether you're drawing a penguin like chili willy or you're drawing an actual person then you can manipulate it any way you need to you know understand the shapes um there is a difference though when you said shape language i don't know if you if you meant just drawing starting with shapes because shape language in character design also talks about is is about how um how characters look you know using round shapes add cuteness to it uh more boxy shapes is kind of like the tough guy using more pointy shapes your character is going to be evil and then there's ways of combining them together to kind of give a, a certain feel of stuff um and and in character design that so that's what shape language is i don't know if that's what you were talking about in there i hope it is go over too much but um that's that's a couple of characters right there let's do another character we're gonna go to one of my all-time favorite cartoon characters he's a Hanna-Barbera character and his name is Ricochet Rabbit I have always loved Ricochet Rabbit McGill Gorilla might be my all-time favorite Hanna-Barbera cartoon but it was Ricochet Rabbit that was my favorite section in the Megillah Gorilla cartoons. So let's lower the opacity here. And I did it on the wrong layer, sorry. Let's lower the opacity here. That's too low. I want you to be able to see a little bit more. And let's start figuring out these shapes. So I come in, and what has he got there? Perfect circle. I think you guys can see that um, that there's a little bit of repetitiveness in there. Woody's head was a circle. Chili's head was a circle. Ricochet's head's a circle, right? His body, in this pose, kind of looks like the letter U. And you know what? I think this is a little... Oh, I know why it's not working for me. Well, drawing on the wrong layer. Give me a second. We need to be able to see it better. All right, so let's look at that circle. See, now we can see it, right? So we got that circle. It's got this U shape here, right? And in different poses, it could this could be a bean shape. It could be different shapes, depending on what we want to do. That's right, Carl. Bing, bing, bing. Terrible voice, but I did it. And we got a couple of rectangles here and some ovals, right? And then another kind of rectangular shape, and I'll just use kind of that oval here, right? His ears, it's almost triangular right there, right? This kind of has this rectangular feel to it. And then we have this kind of shape on the outside. And, oh, Nikki, you said, gotcha, I was just talking about the volume of building manipulation like you dug into it for a minute. I can see the difference between the term and shape design. Oh, thanks. I'm, ha I'm happy I can help you guys out, answer any questions, feel free to ask whatever you want. So again, I didn't put the line of action here because he's, he's standing up straight right now. But if I wanted to, let's do, uh, I was going to say Woody, Ricochet, he would always kind of jump in the air and, you know, have his guns and he was like the bing, bing, bing. So let's put him like this and let's manipulate this shape here I'm gonna bring one arm down and up and then another one down here actually you know what let's do 
this one up, right? This is him holding his guns. He's getting ready to ricochet off something. And maybe should we have his legs go out like that? Maybe one leg out like that. The other one like so. And on this one here, I'll add that right there. This hand might be covering it. All right, and then we'll have this ear going backwards. And this ear, which is... I don't remember if his ears flopped open when, when he did that, but I'm going to flop it open. Right? I'm going to put those guidelines, and I'm going to use this as... And even though I put this line of symmetry in here, I could erase that and change the direction of his head. Even though his body's turned one way, his head may be turned another. So we might have... Actually, I wanted to go the other way. Sorry, because... And the reason I'm doing that is because I cut off part of his little furriness here on the other side with the arm, so his head's going to be in that direction so the arm can cover it. And now I come in, and he gets his big nose, right? He gets that mouth that's open, and... And his eyes will be closed. Right? And we got to make sure the hack gets in there. This is the one thing I've always hated about drawing um, Ricochet was his hat. I always have trouble getting that correct. But I love him so much I had to include him in here. And I'll have his gun here in this hand. And the gun is just take it into shapes. Right? He's only, I think he was only a one gun character. Um, uh, let's undo that. Oops, there we go. So there's his belt buckle and maybe his gun holsters hanging off. Or not his belt, his belt. And he's got his jacket and he's up like that. And maybe. Tooth and... So you see how I just made this. Now I can go in again, clean them up. You saw me do that with Woody a bit, right? I don't have to do that right now just for time, but I could. And do you see here how I'm, all I'm doing is manipulating these shapes in the directions that I need? So what if he was angry and maybe he's in a profile view? So maybe it's like this, right? And let me zoom in in this section here, right? Maybe his legs are just down like so, and his arm, he's really angry, right? So when I'm doing this, this also helps me think of body language for him. Let's get his... Down here, his gun holster, right? We'll have the other eye over there, and then we'll make sure to get his hat on him. And this ear will still be flopping, which adds a little bit to the humor. And that that one, you know, may be up in that direction. And don't forget, he got his little curls there. You see how I made him look angry in the pose just by by the shape manipulation there. All right, let's move on. And don't forget, if you have questions, please ask. Um, I got two more characters here, and then maybe, uh, I don't know if this will take us to the whole hour or if it will uh, give me time to just kind of sketch too and, and answer more questions if you guys have them. But one of my favorite characters is Mighty Mouse. And he's already been... I've already lowered his opacity. Let's bring this up. This is another model sheet I found online. Mighty Mouse... When I, when I was a kid... Um, when I was a kid, Mighty Mouse was one of my all-time favorite characters. If I didn't have my medical issue and I was allowed to get... Tattoos, Mighty Mouse, I would have tattooed on my arm right now. Um, I'm, I'm a huge Mighty Mouse fan. And my first character I created, I thought I was parodying 
Mighty Mouse. I made him a monkey, and I called him Mighty Monkey, and that's been my first character ever. Um, when I was like seven or eight years old, I created him. But Mighty Mouse himself was a parody off Superman and Mickey Mouse. So, like, if we were to look at Mickey Mouse just to start off, right? Mickey Mouse has his mask. I'm going to do this quick. Right? And he's got his ears up here. And there's Mickey. Right? Mighty Mouse, his, they changed him up a little bit. So he still has that mask that Mickey had. And he's got his nose right in the center and got his mouth. But what they did with him is when they gave him the mask, they did two things. One, they added an extra bump up here so it looks different. And instead of putting the ears up here, his ears actually came off around the side here. And you could see inside like it wasn't a solid black. So just, you know, so there are similarities to these characters if you, if you really sit around and look. And understanding that, we can now think about his body. So Mickey's body, when he first started, right, was kind of this, he, it was a little chubby, right? Kind of had these pants up here that came in and he had his, and his legs came out off of there. But if we take the shape of Mickey's body here and turn it upside down, where it's now a circle on top and it shrinks down in this direction, you know, we can now see a much stronger looking body. But what we talked about a moment ago about shape language, right? Um, we keep this roundness to add to the, it's a little muscular, but it still adds cuteness to the character. And then his legs are kind of these short legs there. And his arms are, are large. Okay. Um, Carl, I just saw you said, I just, oh, you're doing droop along there. You just got that. So, let me create a new layer. Let's do a Mighty Mouse. Whoops. Let's do a Mighty Mouse. Let's look at these shapes here, right? I just kind of did them. So we have... What up? Oh, I did it again. Always do. <laughs> I always... Problems with digital drawing. Um, what's going on? Sorry, one layer again. There we go. So now with this Mighty Mouse, I'm going to give him two shapes, not just the one for the head, but I'm going to break it up in two parts. You see that? That helps me create the snout a little bit, and then another circle here for the ear. And then he's got his body, which again, large circle, tiny rectangle, rectangle. Right? And his legs are kind of these ovals, so that his legs kind of look like this. They're just kind of oval shapes together. And what's nice about it is, like here, you see how he can bend his leg right here, and then this just gets a little smaller. Same thing with his arms. They're, one's a bigger oval going to the smaller one. And his hands are ovals, right? So let's see about drawing a Mighty Mouse. Now I showed you a couple of ways to start him. So what I'm going to do is, if I wanted to, I can look at this model sheet of his and, and you know, um, let me pull it up so you can see it better, and look at things. But I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'm not, I mean, meaning I can pull something off here. But I'm going to kind of try to do my own. So what I want to do is I want to get that, sorry, drawing on the wrong layer again. That's the life of this. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a circle. I'm gonna have him looking. Let's have him looking down, right? And his body. Let's have his body kind of up like this. 
Now, the reason I'm doing that is because what I want him to do is look like he's getting ready to leap down into action. Now, I'm drawing that circle, and he's not going to have a neck, not that he usually has one, but you're not even going to see the whole body. He's going to be kind of hunched over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add now some basic shapes. You see how it looks like he's going to be flying down. And even though I'm going to be drawing his cape, and his cape's going to be covering most of this, um, this leg will be back here, right? And then I'll have a little tiny one. Um, I'm still drawing the rest of the body. The reason I'm doing that is because it helps me make sure everything is in place together. And Mighty Mouse, when his cape goes out, he actually we can actually create just a, a giant red, you know, piece there. So this is when he's singing, you know, the here I come to save the day. I know that was terrible, but there we go. I had to do it. I actually gave him four fingers instead of three on this hand, so I got to erase that. Oh, I knew it looked weird for some reason. So, then you can see what I've done there, and I come in and erase what I don't need. But again, understand how these shapes go together. Where do they need to be? Where is your line of action? If you can do that, Honestly, you can really draw anything you want. And Mighty Mouse is one of those like dream characters for me to draw um, professionally. So, and you can come in and clean that up after. All right. So, last but not least, we got one of my. Oops. I didn't grab any way off that. The new, the, the last thing, and then maybe I'll just draw based on time. The Flintstones. Who doesn't love the Flintstones? Give me one second. I'm going to get a, a sip of water. Sorry, all that talking, you know? So let's, uh, let's draw Fred. Everybody, um, you know, he's probably the most famous, obviously. So let's do what we did before. Let's lower the opacity. And let's get a layer out that we can draw on. And let's think about the shape of his head. Fred's head, and I don't always draw it this way, is basically a circle down here and kind of a rectangle right there. And his body is kind of this big rectangular shape. His legs are rectangles, and we do ovals for the feet. And his arms are basically the same. But when I draw Fred, I usually draw the shape together. I just kind of find that shape. And the guidelines, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, let me just do this. Whoops. I want to get the whole thing in there. So I'm just going to move this off to the side up here for a moment. Right? If we look, and, well, and we were to look at Fred where it, it kind of turns, right? Where it turns is right around here. Right there forms his eye line. Okay? So by... By knowing even you know knowing where the turn is, it's basically where this connection is. Um, we can place his eyes, and you may see people draw Fred differently. They may tell you other different things. I'm just going to redo that head. Um, this is my method, 
everybody develops their own methods. And let's go to the brush. Okay. So let's, I just want to draw it a little larger. Okay. Now remember, where that turn is, is where Fred's eyes are going to go. But also, if we look, he, he's, he's going to be in this three-quarter view. Um, I'll just... And that and that three quarter view is gonna be meaning his nose is blocking one of the eyes. So I'm gonna have an eye here, and he's got a little, um, you know, eyelid underneath, and then he's got another one here. I'll just have him go right here, and then, you know, this one should be a little bigger. Sorry, that does happen sometimes. Oh, that's why we have an eraser, right? And then out here, we get his mouth, and we add his 5 o'clock shadow in. It's too far. All right. And his hair, I'll do his eyebrows after. His hair is kind of this. It's too far. Got that. So, and then his body, we come in and we could kind of do this. We'll come in with his. His collar and his tie. Right? We can put the rectangles in for his feet and we'll just throw that in right now and that his arm coming on his arm coming down and this arm up like so and, and that's not the best hand this is all quick right now but it is a great way to uh, to start him out you know and have a rough in there also, what I find interesting, and I've always found this interesting, um, is how they draw, Hanna-Barbera draws feet. If we notice, they all have three fingers and a thumb, right? But, you know, you look at Betty and Wilma, it looks like they only have two toes. Sometimes they do a little more, but it's usually just a line there. And Fred and Barney only have three toes. You know, to this day, I'd have to go back and read to find out why they did that. I don't, I, I don't remember. Um, could have been to save on ink or something, but uh, but when Ed Benedict was designing these guys, he was just a brilliant character designer. Um, so it could be something in, in just the design. But I've always loved it, and it's something I've always looked at. So let me get a clean sheet of paper here. And what I want to do now is I wanted to kind of design my own... Uh, character and it could be an animal it could be a human being it doesn't matter what's important is I'm getting the shapes and what a lot of people like are cute characters so if I'm gonna do cute I'm gonna do round I'm gonna use curved lines I'm gonna use excuse me I'm gonna use um, uh, you know more circular shapes so if I start a circle I say okay there's gonna be the, the head and I'm going to do the body maybe kind of like this bean shape, right? And I'm going to put the guidelines in here. So, And I'm going to put the eyes right on here. I'm going to give it, uh, let's make this. We can make this. A, uh, you know, let's do a monkey. I've been drawing a lot of monkeys lately um, for a personal project. So, and what I want to do for this one is I'm going to give him or her, I haven't decided yet, a little nose. But I'm going to add another curved shape right here, another circle. I'm going to give it that big piece. And I want to give the ears off here. And I'll have him looking up. 
All right, so I got these things. Here I'm gonna kind of manipulate the face a bit. Nope, I don't like that. And I'm gonna come in and do that. All right, now I'm gonna give him small, or her again, you never know, um, legs. Just cause, and, and kind of big feet. Because it adds to the it adds to the cuteness. And this arm I'm gonna draw out over here. Just to have that long monkey arm, and I'll put something in his hand in this one. Maybe I'll have down like so. Right? And then his tail. And the tail should come off like the bottom of the spine. Actually, I'm really liking this monkey a lot compared to what my last few drawings were. So I'm going to just have his hand like he's reaching for something. And maybe it'll be a banana he's not supposed to be eating right now. All right. So after this stage, and I've done this, in reality, I'd put a, a uh, if I was drawing traditionally, I'd put a piece of paper on top and go on my light box and clean this up. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to lower the opacity like I did before. I'm going to go in. I'm going to get black. And I'm going to zoom in on this so we can see it a little better. And like I said, you get cleaner lines. And let me use a better brush right now. I'm going to use this one. And... I'll bring it up to a 10 point. I'm going to come around. Now, I don't like that line. I'm going to give it a little bit of smoothing. That's something we can do on the computer here that we can't do by hand. It fixes my drawing up a bit. It adds to the smoothness of my lines. Um, we're going to be ending in a few minutes as soon as I'm done with this picture. Does anyone have any other questions or comments for me? Or Now, one of the things I just did, and you might have seen this in old cartoons, right, is I've ad I extended the line up here with his eyes. Um, what that does is creates the illusion of an eyelid. up on the ear. I'm going to ink a little faster now. Um, and I hope you guys liked what I went over today. Um, I will be doing more of these next week. I'll probably have a different topic than classic cartoon characters. I just thought that would be a fun topic for today. And... Um... Hold on, I just saw a comment. Uh, can I adjust the line thickness? Uh, yeah, I can. This is a pressure-sensitive pen that I have here.
Uh, so you can see I can get different thicknesses. If the if it's a bigger brush size, like I'm at, I was at a 10 before, this is a 30. So you can see no pressure. This is very light, and now I get hev heavier. Um, when I work specifically with something like this, um, I'm trying to keep the lines the same, just to give it that kind of old, you know, the animation feel. They, there's a very same line in animation. Um, the old, the old school stuff. I mean, when they did ink with a brush, but it was still they tried to keep a lot of stuff the same um, because you know they didn't want the images to look super different or have heavy shadows in one area on one frame than than the other one. Not so much, you know. Um, but yeah, it's a you know I can get very light if I want to. And I would go in and clean this up a bit. I'm not really happy with some of my lines. Um, like here, I would want to put in a... Uh, I feel like I, I forgot a line here. That would show. And also, I think I have too much uh, smoothing on for this character. You know? Maybe I would move that there. You know, maybe I would give some roughness in certain areas but <clears throat> but that is the the final image here um let me come back to here so uh i think it was pretty interesting today i hope everyone had had a good time um, I will be doing more of these every Friday at 1 o'clock until school starts up again. Um, I'll be doing this on the Incredicon page that you guys are watching right now. On Mondays and Wednesdays, I do YouTube streams at 1 o'clock. Um, very similar to what I'm doing now. You're very welcome, Carl. Thank you for coming in. I'm not... Um, it's not always going to be the same thing. I've done some basic cartooning. I'm going to start trying to have some guests in here. Um, I was supposed to have a good friend of mine come in today, but his schedule prevented that from happening. So hopefully maybe next week we'll have him come. Uh, he was a cartoonist, does his own comic strip. I thought it would be fun to show you guys that. So maybe that'll happen next week. Um, what else? Well, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's really it. So check me out on YouTube. It's just my name, Michael Gracia. I'll have pre-recorded videos for, for kids that are like, pre-k to second grade i'll have uh the live streams on on um mondays and wednesdays at one friday i'll have a live stream on here at one and uh mike lopez and i are doing uh in credit chats on here at uh you know a couple of times a week uh we had one last night if you missed it, you can see it on my youtube page or you can see it on the Incredicon page here we had dennis knight and uh bob sadaro on and talk to them about comics and the industry and we'll be doing that and promoting other kids, uh, not, I mean, other comic artists and, 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 and other things and in then discussing other things in the industry. So uh, come and check that out. Thanks again for stopping in. Uh, if you missed this, this will be playable in a few moments on Incredicon, and it'll be up on my YouTube page by later tonight. And also, one last thing, my getintune.net page will have coloring pages, if not tonight, by tomorrow. Um, I'll have free downloadable coloring pages and, and, and things to help you draw and make comics. All right. Thanks again, guys. I will see you later. Um, so don't forget getintune.net. Thank you.